When you use a typewriter, you become focused on what you're thinking. And you just put your thoughts directly on paper. And there's nothing between you but you and that little keyboard. It's really magical. My name is Paul Lundy, and we're here at the Bremerton Office Machine Company. And we reside in a spiffy little 1946 office building. Originally, Bob Montgomery and his dad started the business. He came here after World War II. His dad had gotten the contract at the Navy Yard, and the company has been in business since 1947. What is it about typewriters? <laughs> what is it about typewriters? Yeah, it's so funny because you, you look at these things and it's just like, I mean, they're just pieces of mechanical stuff, right? Permutations over the years and the decades, all doing one thing and everybody having a slightly different idea on how they should look. Like that cute little royal portable P, the most darling little typewriter. And then you got this ponderous Underwood sitting here, all doing the same thing. Typewriters are a thing of the past. <laughs> you, certainly want, you certainly wouldn't buy a modern typewriter today. <laughs> There's a large group of people who I call typewriter enthusiasts, who, um, who like me have recognized the uniqueness of these machines and, and what they do and the different styles and the different eras of what they represent. Hi. And they become enamored with them too. And, and they bring them in um, sometimes by the dozens. So go ahead and put your uh, machine there. And... Okay. Wow. The nice little uh, Royal 10. And you're solving a problem for them, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So it looks like needs paper rollers all the way around. Okay. You're helping them in some way, right? You guys are really stuck. Like today, advising him not to repair his typewriter because of rust. There it is, there's the rust. But going ahead anyway, you know, or just um, helping somebody change ribbon. Seven, two, three, seven. And the customers two, themselves. Three, seven. So yeah, 1929. Hmm. It runs the spectrum. Um, everything from um, the elderly who just need a helping hand with a, with a more modern typewriter, to people who come in with family heirlooms that have been on the shelf for decades. Yeah. Well, well, we'll do our best. Okay. Let me write you up a service ticket then. All right. You crazy person. Yes, I am. Boy. <laughs> There's a very small group of people who write and publish and have come to realize that the typewriter is key to their creativity. And I am very fortunate to service uh, typewriters of these people and to just to listen to them uh, tell me how focused they've become just because they don't do their first draft on a computer or a pad or whatever, but on a typewriter. Yeah, this is a really good example of a Smith Premier number two. This is uh, from the year 1900. I have always loved repairing things. I've been in facilities work for decades. Um, made a career out of um, facilities, worked for a lot of local biotech companies. This is the type basket, and you can see they come up from down below. The original instructions had you brushing your type. Ta-da! <laughs> Look at this. This is actually wood, and these are all sewn in place. I mean, the craftsmanship of even just a cleaning brush is amazing. Then one day I read in the Seattle Times, last typewriter repairman at 92. And I thought, wow, I gotta go see that guy. So went down here the next day, I met Mr. Montgomery. He knew every single man manufacturer and typewriter and model and all the different changes that had been made on any particular model throughout the decades, it was like, the knowledge the guy had was, was just incredible. I got hooked. I just got hooked. So this is a Remington Model 1 Noiseless. They were known as the Noisy Noiseless. Not exactly noiseless. Once a week and then 
twice a week, and then pretty soon I think I had two jobs. Oh, look at that tiny screw, oh my God. By the end of the year, I was having so much fun doing this in my spare time with Mr. Montgomery, I just asked him, do you think I got what it takes? And then he looked at me, You're okay, looking at me over his glasses. Classic Mr. Montgomery. I asked Lisa, my wife, um, I think I'm gonna do something crazy. Um, are you okay with this? And she said, this isn't the first crazy thing you've done, so I'm probably gonna be okay. And then I bought the business um, at the end of the year. The reason why I'm here today is because Mr. Montgomery really did stick it out. I mean, he created a little niche for himself that survived. So you look, if you're in your 90s, I, I, if, if you bring something that's pretty simple, I'm gonna give you same day service. Because we all know that you've got better things to do than to be waiting for a typewriter sitting around. But if you're younger, you're gonna wait like everybody else. <laughs> you, don't, you never know where life's gonna take you. And right now it's taking me here with typewriters and I am having a time of my life, and I'm gonna do it for as long as I can. For hours, location, and how to make an appointment, go to typespec.com. Catch Art Zone Friday nights at 8 and anytime online at seattlechannel.org slash artzone. <laughs>